on that. Get to the league lead with two shutouts. He's played 72 NHL games, a proven kind of guy. He's had a terrific pro career, looking to get himself back in the National Hockey League. And he's the goaltender for the Houston Arrows. Face off at the Denver Grizzlies all to the left of their net by number 68 in white for the Denver Grizzlies. An interesting story with a helmet. Zygmunt Palfi had a heck of a preseason with the New York Islanders. Here comes Nicholas Anderson. He scores! <laughs> Nicholas Anderson puts the hometown Grizzlies on top. One to nothing. Offensively, a smart play by Anderson, hanging around the blue line, just waiting to get the feed, waiting to get a pass right on the tape. You see right in the neutral zone, a perfect pass by Miller right on the tape, and Anderson lets her fly, decides to go against the grain, fires that low to the glove side, and from a goaltender's angle, you see Gamble, he's out far enough, tries to kick out with the left leg, just misses it, and that one, in fact, just got inside the post. There's sandbags surrounding it, so you couldn't hear a clunk or anything. It just ended up in a perfect position. Great shot by Anderson. Sandba the arrows dumped the puck in on a good dump by Murray Eves, but right at the blue line on the left of your screen, Pellerin dumped one of the players of the Grizzlies, and you're going to rest the game. Power play unit for Denver. Anderson along with Badil and... Also out there, Kip Miller, as Anderson nearly had his second goal of the night. As it controls, five seconds left in the power play for Denver. McWilliam behind the net. And Townsend is out of the box. The sides are even, but Palfi cruises in and loses control in the slot. He had a great scoring chance. Here's Tiki. And just getting a stick on it was Gamble. Milan Tiki's shot didn't have much. Sam Townsend, I don't know. Yes, it is. Graham Townsend for Houston. Well, two pretty big guys. Townsend, 6'2", 215 pounds. Nothing much really going on here. Neither guy able to get an arm loose. A couple of tough customers. McWilliams as well. Townsend's an interesting fellow. Born in Jamaica, Darren. And he's been a tough guy throughout his professional career, and he shows why there. 1-0 Denver. Back to McNichols. And Palfi just had a pretty good chance at the end of a power play for the Denver Grizzlies. And the puck was loose. Troy Gamble had to make a good save, sprawling out to his right, getting his stick on it. But then, here's what happens. Mick Williams and Townsend, they both collide. A couple of big guys. They're both over six foot three. They're both over 215. Tippett with the initial hit originally. Now, that was a pretty solid hit right there. Let's, let's listen to this and take a sound. It's a good hit on the far side. Now, the penalty happened just prior to that. So the elbow, and that'll wash out the, the shot. Score! Mario Cittarone. Cittarone got a lot of room. Takes the shot. Score! And Mario Cittarone, with an even strength goal, ties this game at one. Let's go. Veteran defenseman Norm Rochford going backwards across the blue line, lost his footing, and enabled 16. Cittarone to blast by him on the far side and fire it low to the glove side. And Salo came out far enough, but again, just like the first goal of the game, low to the glove side. Take a look at number 22 on your screen. Rochefort going backwards, lost his footing, bang. That gives Cittaroni the room to go on the far side, and he just let her fire right, right, right off the post. In a good, good shot. And you see Salo out far enough, cutting down the angle. He leans a little bit to his right, just enough, and bang, right underneath there, right off the post, off the inside. Good shot by Cittaroni. He's got his first goal. Couldn't control it. Doug Crossman does and carries in. Denver's on a power play for the next 30 seconds. And the Arrows will just try and lug it out and get some of that time off the penalty clock. They don't lug it out. They skate it in and take a shot. It is wide. I mark. Tied at one. Here's the shot by Pellerin off the right pad of Tommy Sello. Good save by Sallow getting his right pad on it. On a good hard shot right in the middle of the... Oh, Zygmunt Peltney with a blast, hits the post, rebound. Comes back to Crossman. Crossman in the slot to Palfi. On the backhand, he's put down. Zygmunt Palfi's had a couple of good chances. That brought the crowd up. Ryan Peller had another shot in on Salem. <laughs> they love him there. If we were teammates, that'd be real cool. Yo, Pang. <laughs> oh, he's in mid-season form, ladies and gentlemen. Milan Tiki. Yeah, one more. Yet, but Tommy Sallow <laughs> comes up with a pretty good save, and at the other end, so did 
that guy, Troy Gamble. The first one, Scott Pellerin off the right side, trying to go against the grain again, and you see the positioning of your goaltender, Tommy Salo, getting the right pad, sort of a half butterfly formation, and no danger there with the rebound. So Salo comes up with a pretty strong save, and anytime you give up a goal on a shot, a longer shot, it's important to make a save, and Zygmunt Palfi made a terrific shot. That one went on the near side, right straight off the post. That's as square as you can get it off that post, and we will have a segment later on called Panger Off the Post. That's true, and a segment even later called Pang's Mailbox. Trying to let her rip right here. Doesn't get through all the way, blocked partially by a stick, and then it does get through, and a good save by Gamble with the left side of his body. Marinucci, as we said, scored a brilliant goal last night, the game-winning goal against Minnesota, faking a shot, and we will be talking to him just moments from now downstairs. Name And Tippin, number 14, never heard his coach. He was out of position. And if it goes kind of ting and hollow, it's, it means it went off the post and in, but if it's a nice solid one, usually that means it went off the post and stayed out. So for a goaltender, that is good news. My paying off the post for this week it's going to begin with the shootout, which originated right here in the International Hockey League. The shootout, after a game is tied, there is no overtime. You go right to penalty shot situations. A player has the puck at the center ice line, referee blows the whistle, and it's one-on-one -on -one hockey. It takes a little bit away from the team game, but it makes for some excitement for the fans. This example here, the Peoria Rivermen winning because of a goal. Now this situation, one-on-one -on -one again, the most dramatic play in hockey, a save by a goaltender. That can really pick up your team, pick up, picks up the fans, and obviously that keeps you in the game now as well one-on-one -on -one. what's the goaltender thinking the responsibility is largely on that goaltender now it's not much of a team game in fact Houston Arrows goaltender Rob Dobson explains to us the power of the goaltender well it's something that there's a lot of pressure put on the goaltender you know you've played 60 minutes hard-fought battle it comes out you know sometimes even 0-0 zero, zero. And all of a sudden now, with the elimination of the five-minute overtime, you're put into a situation where it's you and five of their players. And it's the difference between a win and a loss. And um, unfortunately, last season in the IHL, I was involved in about 14 of them. And I lost eight by, like, one goal. So it's something that's become part of the IHL. It's very exciting for the fans. Um, the elimination of the five-minute overtime has caused a few uh, discussions amongst the players. But... Again, it's exciting for the fans, and it's become so much a part of our league that, in essence, you still have to practice it, and it has become a part of practice. And the bottom line, really, for, for, for this type of situation is, if in the regular season, very entertaining, people can get excited about it. It's an 84-game regular season, but in the playoffs or for a world championship, you eliminate that shootout altogether. But for now, the IHL making strides in just yet another area. That's it for Panger Off the Post for this week. Let's now go upstairs. Tommy, have you ever put one off the post, buddy? No, but I wish you, they'd had a shootout when you played, Darren. I'd have given anything to see how you carried your team to victory by stoning shooter after shooter. And we're in a stationary type breakout. D, all you got to do is come out like this. You can either use your partner or you can fire it here up the middle or right off the boards. Worst case scenario, it gets out of our end, which is not a bad scene. Best case scenario is maybe a trap when we got a three on two going or a two on one if the defense stands up. We get shots from the points, guys. You know, we're making a good play to get it. We get it back to here. We got one guy here, one guy here, one guy here. Shot goes, comes out here. Guess what happens? Three on two the other way. Get the third guy out here. Just back up. More than, more than likely, the rebounds will come right in that area for you. If it doesn't, you're in position to back check. Guys, it's one thing to get beat when the other team all plays you or has got more talent than you. But it's another thing when you let them beat you. Make them earn their goals. Make them earn their good plays. We're better than them, no doubt. Just play it. Keep it simple, play hard, make good changes, and let's take this period away from them. Let's get our game going again. Well, if you've ever wondered what goes on in an NHL or an IHL or just a hockey uh, locker room between periods, Darren, we, we took you live inside. But that was great. That was great. Abuchi he really explained what was going on. He talked about face-off. Tied at one, it's Cittarone. Busting down, takes advantage of Rochefort falling at the blue line. Another blast, similar. Low to the glove side, along the ice. Hey, kids, it doesn't have to go high every single time you shoot the puck. That is just, quite simply, a pretty darn good shot. So Cittarone tied the game up at 1-1. Shots on goal in the first period, 14 -4. Lady that she's okay, she's fine, but she, uh, she took a hard puck and it just came over the glass area. And 
That's one of the things about going to a hockey game, mm. uh, or any sport for that matter, but mostly hockey, because the puck does carry them in off the glass certain times, so you've got to keep your eye on the puck. She's getting attention right now, going to get taken care of. A fairness to the players, the ice here we made mention. Now, of course, they're new to putting the ice down here again. It has been a minor problem. They're hoping to uh, get that ice going a little bit better. By meaning bad ice, it means it gets choppy real early. Probably there's always too much on the surface or not the right temperature, but that means the puck's not going to stay not quite as frenetic as the start of the game. 2-1-1. On one. As I say that, a two-on-one. McWilliam lines it up, and out of his net is Gamble. Cuts down the angle, and a nice save. Troy Gamble keeps this a 1-1 game and tempers Flair after the save. With 16.37 to go in the second period. Watching from the hot tub here in the Florida Nichols Arena. Hot shot here by McWilliam. No bubbles on this one. A, a high, hard one trying to go high to the glove side on the short side. And you see the position of where Gamble is on a two-on-one. Now a goaltender's job is to take the shooter. So the defenseman fades away and makes sure he has the pass. And a great save by Gamble as we take a look at the ice that's not frozen. Yeah. Meanwhile, still on the puck. Now they both go down. No penalty called. Shot taken. Score! Oh. What a bullet by Rob Robinson. Beating the goaltender Salo cleanly on a four-on-four -four situation, two to one Houston. Credit a lot of that work to the veteran Tippett. Boy, he was on that board for probably 30 to 40 seconds working it, keeping control, making sure that the play was kept alive, and in fact he was taken down. And oh boy, not a very good goal. The positioning, that's the key right there, is the positioning of where Salo is. It is net. Inside the blue paint, inside his crease. Here's Darrell Olsen skating it in. Olsen gets it over to Brian McKee. Walk Back to in. Olsen. Fake the shot, and out of his net comes Sallow. As on the doorstep was Scott Arneal. Terry Ruskowski urging his troops on from the Houston bench. Olsen with a nice fake shot right to Tippett. Now Tippett never got full wood on that. That was sort of a healer. And it enabled Sallow to make the save. Still four on three for the next five seconds. Then it'll be a five on four Houston power play. Walk it, it's now five on four. You hear Ruskowski saying, walk it in, walk it in, take the shot. Sallow gets a glove on the shot, which was taken by Brian McKee. McKee keeps it in. Scott Arneal. Arrows still have a minute 15 to go in the rest of their power play. This is McKee. Lofting one in, Deneen blocks it initially, comes loose again. The power play to the far side, the shot by McKee. Good, good save by Sallow, getting the left pad on it. Again, he's deep in his net, but he has to be because of the power play and men out in front of him. Arneal with this shot here, which was blocked. Oh, Rochefort did. Poor guy, all he did was block a shot and took one in the middle section, and then he got trampled on by Arneal and a couple of the guys. Face off, and here comes Denver, five on five, Nicholas Anderson on side, but off the skate of McKee. Loose puck in the slot, Crossman a shot, and a save by Troy Gamble. What a save by Gamble. Clearly just robbed the veteran Crossman, Crossman trying to go high to the glove side, all alone in between the rings. I wonder if Cross has anything to say about that one. Apparently not. <laughs> Let's take a look at why Crossman might be a little bit frustrated. The carom off the skate. Now here's Crossman moving in. Now this is a good position. One timer, high to the glove side. Strong save though. Crossman's trying to say that puck was spinning a little bit much. He couldn't get a lot on it. Then the, was in the in the cuff in the glove area. So Oleg's going to go off and spend some time in the grunge box. And it will be Denver's fourth power play. The grunge box. It's back. It lives. It, it, it does. It, it will never be gone. <laughs> we'll see about that. Puck is... Advantage of it. Now, Miller, I thought, had a chance to maybe shoot the puck. He instead decided to move it on over, move it to the perimeter, and it allowed Crossman to walk in. Now, this is a, a longer shot, though. It might have gone off a little bit of a... It looked like it got raised a little bit, but there's no one in front. No, it, it looked like it might have gone off the blade of the stick of Gamble. Nonetheless, again to the glove side in the middle part of the net or low. And Crossman has his first of the season. That's as excited as Doug Crossman gets. He was bumped a little bit in his crease and Troy Gamble didn't like it. Well, now you see Medill and Gamble. Oh, well, Gamble stepped out a little bit, wanted to give Medill a shot, wanted to let him know he wasn't happy about the stuff going outside his crease. 
Campbell, in all likelihood, just wasn't too pleased about that Doug Crossman goal. A lot of scrums happen right after a whistle in the crease. Little jam play inside of the net. Let's see if we can find out what started all this. Marinucci causing the puck to go around. Now Medill trying to jam it. A little jam play, then takes a hit. Now the puck's loose. Puck's still loose. And you see Marinucci come in with his stick, and actually, Gamble got the wrong guy. He came out afterwards, unless Medill had said something to him, but that was actually Marinucci's stick that was inside trying to gather up the loose puck. You see, Marinucci's got a glove around his face. Now he's going to get a, a waffle in the beak. And then Medill's probably going to come in and say a couple of words. So, hey, goalie hears that. we got a great mask on your face. Goalie's not going to get hurt, Tommy, you know, are you? Mask on the face, the sticks are a little high. They're, they're well protected. Well, they are the smartest players on the ice. We all know that. Troy Gamble played last year at Kalamazoo yep. of the Eye after signing with the Dallas Stars. It was a 1985 draftee of the Vancouver Canucks was Gamble in the second round. And penalties being assessed to... Rochefort takes advantage of a good feed by Palfi. And Rochefort looked like he was just trying to fire that over to the side. But instead, it caroms in off the defenseman's shin pad past the goaltender, Troy Gamble. Rushford will get a credit for his first goal of the season. That goal coming at 9.05, and that was meant to be a pass, Tom. Instead, it went off the... Good scoring chance by the Houston Arrows. Pellerin has the chance on the right wing. Instead of passing the puck, he buries his head and tries to fire it low to the stick side. But it's Tommy Sallow that gets his right leg on it and then smothers the rebound. That was Davey Tippett, number 14, that was busting on the left side, doing what the second man should do on a two-on-one. See the New York Islander logo on his molded mask. Tommy, of course, was a fifth round draft pick last year after a brilliant Olympic campaign, a gold medal, had the penalty shot thing going his way, stopped Paul Korea. That was unbelievable, wasn't it? Sure was. Varying degrees of back loose in the Denver zone. Rob Robinson, or I should say uh, Derek Armstrong, goes back for it to Zygmunt Palfi. Palfi hits uh, maybe off the outside of the post. Looked like it went off the blocker and then the side of the post. You're right, Tom. Good hard shot by Palfi. Usually he's been faking that shot and going wide. That time he elected to shoot it. Here comes Zygmunt Palfi again. He's got some jets, doesn't he? Palfi oh, lets her fly oh. and Gamble got a piece of it and looked like a boxer about ready to go down. Oh, that was crippling. That, that hurt. Where did it hit him? Left shoulder. Oh. Here's Tippett the other way for Houston. Tippett a drive to the short side. It's wide. Ten. Well, welcome back to McNichols Arena in Denver. I'm Tom Mees along with Darren Pang. We're taking a look at Zygmunt Palfi coming in the blast. Ouch, the left shoulder. And there's not much padding up there, if any, on Troy Gamble, is there? Right on the middle of it. Okay, that stuck. On his way to the Houston zone. Rochefort, the shot. The save by Gamble. Loose puck in front. As again, we have a four on four situation. Nicholas Anderson loose in front. And the shot is a save by Gamble. Anderson in the corner. Another penalty being called here. And. And then after that week back, how that play was set up. Miller, Crossman, and Crossman a quick pass to Zygmunt Palfi. And the faceoff will come into Denver, rather in the Houston zone, to the left of that man, Troy Gamble. Not necessarily the hard shot that counts, it's the positioning and the way the puck is passed, trying to get people sliding on the fence. Here, Crossman saying uh, that we got to open up. Got to open up a little bit on this power play. inside the crease. Again, Crossman controlling his power play for the most part down low. Tried to get it to Palfi out front, but it didn't make it. You got Luongo and Tiki at the points now. As a defenseman, the goaltender, stop it right here if you can. The defenseman is going to try to take the pass away. The goaltender, you see the position right there. The goaltender is going to take the shooter. So the bottom line here is the defenseman and the goalie don't want this soft, nifty little pass that goes across 
the slot and onto the tape. And in this example, it's Dave Tippett. So he has an open net. So here we have the situation. It's drawn out. Let's let it roll. The shot is taken by Pellerin. Your goaltender stands up and challenges the shooter. And the play is solid. Goaltender and defenseman both make that play. They make it happen. And so there's the communication factor as well. We've had Doug Crossman through the course of this game talking to his defensive partners, talking to his goaltenders, and communicating with one another. If, for example, the defenseman wanted to slide over there early, that pass would come across and you can guarantee, unless the goaltender made a brilliant save, that the red light would go on. So that's it for this week, Panger's Mailbox, and I hope that helps you out. If you've got any kind of questions or letters, here's where you're going to write to. Darren Pang, ESPN Plaza, 935 Middle Street, Bristol, Connecticut, 06010. We thank Rusty Stone for that brilliant letter for this week to get us started on Pang's Mailbox. As I said, we'll get that going this year also on Prodigy. We'll be online, so we'll get that going. We'll have real mail. We'll have junk mail. We'll have it all right here on The Deuce. All right, Darren, let's quickly take a visit inside the Houston Arrows locker room where head coach Mark Kraskowski did problem, so you'll be able to speak as Kipdiller shoots and shoots just fine to the stick side. Wow, what a chance for Miller. He had that wide open side of the net, unable to capitalize. Bang is in mid-season shape as he's able to sprint up here from down below. And it's a high altitude. I don't know how these players are doing it, Tom. That's something we haven't got oh. into tonight as Arneal centered beautifully for Jerry St. Cyr and a nice save by Sallow. Great save by Sallow. Here's Nicholas Anderson behind the net. Kip Miller. And a breaking Sigmund Palfi. One on one. Gets around his man. Shoots and he's high over the net. Great pass by Arneal. Right on the tape. And look at this two pad slide by. Whoa. Tommy Sallow, just a terrific save. That's a real hard maneuver to make, getting your body there and stacking the pads as we listen on to Terry Ruskowski. It's okay, even cut down the angle, challenging the shooter. Perfect, perfect position. You see Medill, he had the hands up, he had the stick up, he was cocked and ready to go. But Gamble made a good save, and now what happens, the play goes down the other end, and Houston gets a power play chance now. So a bit went off one of the Grizzlies, and it came out and Mark Freer, sort of Johnny on the spot, just hanging around right there. Ties the game up at three as they capitalize on their power play, their first one of the game. The initial shot stopped, and now it looked like Salo thought it was covered. He's sort of sprawling on his side. Puck's loose. Freer's right there. Bang, he's got himself a tally. First goal. Chitteroni with the initial shot. He, he just whiffed on that one. That was on end, and he whiffed on her. But Freer was right there to bang her home. Well, Mark Freer spent last year in the American Hockey League in the Toronto. Palfi at center. Miller and Palfi. Palfi with a beautiful move. Gamble has it go underneath him, but directs it just wide. And a whistle stopping play. We're going far. They were one for four last night. Palfi again using his speed, and clearly that's a penalty. That's being hauled down only because Palfi was using his speed, going wide, driving wide. Clearly a good scoring chance, and you know Gamble really had, to, he just had to get barely a piece of that, but Olsen's going to go off for holding. He, he's got one goal tonight. He shoots, and the save made by Shallow. Rochefort loses possession at center. Here comes Chitteroni. He's got one goal tonight. He shoots, and the save made by Shallow. Back. But even some of the Grizzlies right now, even some of these guys are having a tougher time, but here's the situation. A shorthanded play, and Chitteroni tried to take it from the forehand to the backhand and stuff a, an attempt that Salo got his pad on. It was a two-on-one, though. He might have had a chance to pass that puck across. Salo stayed with him and made a good save. And again, that was causes a little bit of a fumbling. Rochefort again in the neutral zone, and that caused that two-on-one break. You remember Chitteroni over. Now he moves it over to the big guy, Shargodovsky, and he lets a little snapper go, and it doesn't get through. That's blocked in front. You see Graham Townsend in there. As soon as this power play started, Townsend went right to the front of the net. He's a big guy. He's 6'3", trying to cause a screen like that. He didn't have a chance. But again, you see the Pellerin in front of the net, the screen there, trying to get in front of Salo. Yeah, that, that did. That, that looked like that went off the defenseman's stick. He was falling to his left. He just got some wood on it. That was a great save by Gamble. Gamble had to lean back to his right and get the paddle of his stick down. That's just a huge save at that point. Good penetration, good puck movement by the Grizzlies. Shot by Luongo, deflected, just went off the skate, and here, here's the chance right there, and with, with Gamble right on the goal line, he was just able to keep it out. If Medill gets it up just a little bit, good chance of it going over top, but it's a good save. 
Again, it's Eves and Marinucci on the faceoff, and Murray Eves, the veteran, wins the draw for him. One of the things we talked to Chris Marinucci about in between periods is the blade of his stick. It's a very straight blade. Marinucci doesn't like the big curve, and, in, and what happens there is, as his wraparound came around the net, he's on his backhand. So there's no big looping curve. He makes a perfect pass. Palfi has a good chance on the backhand as well, but again, Troy Gamble comes up with a real, real big save. To uh, look at, at Darren Pang with a little bit of hair anyway. <laughs> uh, what, Milwaukee, Saginaw, and this is the Indianapolis Ice, and look at the goals against at that time in this league. That was super. Well, you... Uh, Interesting. I, and he went in trying to go high to the glove. And yeah, it looked like the left arm of Gamble. Looked like he might have got a piece of that. I know it's from far out. Hard to tell, but from behind the net. Probably have a good angle. Go high. Not much time. Yeah, that went off his glove. Preserves a 3-3 tie in the shootout. We played 60 minutes of hockey. We have the shootout still to come. Don't go away. Tom Mees with Darren Pang. We're at McNichols Arena in Denver. There's our score. And the arrows. Let's finish it off. The Great Arrows job. and the Grizzlies are headed for a shootout. Oh, you love a coach that gives his goalie a little pat on the back. He was just telling Troy Gamble, you finished it off. He says, you, you were strong in the end. Now let's finish it off. This is the first time the fans in Denver have seen this. Third shootout for Gamble in what, 10 games? Third of the season in 10 games for the IHL. Oh, okay. Third right. in 10 games yeah, there were two shootouts last night. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The Chicago Wolves lost 6-5 to Detroit. All I know right. the former Chicago Blackhawk, Al Secord, had a chance and did not score. Clayton Young will open the shootout. The visiting team shoots first. Clayton Young, that's the Houston Arrows' choice to go first. Each team gets five shots. Here goes Young in on Tommy Sallow. And the save by Sallow. Good save by Sallow, shutting down the five hole. Clayton Young gave it to him the whole way, didn't disguise any move, and Sallow was able to close down those big white pads. For the Denver Grizzlies, it'll be Kip Miller. Now, this is just like a penalty shot. You get one shot, no rebounds. Here comes Miller in on Gamble. He scores! one nothing, Denver. Terrific move by Miller. That's the disguise that I meant. He had the puck in front of him, but he gave a little shift with his shoulder. Went to the forehand and finished her off. With that spotlight in on the home team skater, does that distract you? I don't know. Here comes Scott, brother. Here comes, and the save on the shot by Jerry St. Cyr. Jerry St. Cyr is stopped by Sallow again. We saw that same save by Sallow against Team Canada for the gold medal at the Olympics. Stacking two pads. Great save by Sallow. Coming up for Denver, Derek Armstrong. And he goes backhand, and the Grizzlies lead the shootout two to nothing. Tom, I don't like that spotlight on that guy. You're right, I just noticed that. But a nice little move again, going towards the backhand. Terrific move, and then finishing up top. For Houston, number 22, the save is made by Mark Freer. Freer is rather stopped, I should say, by the goaltender, Tommy Sallow. So the Houston Arrows are in jeopardy as Taylor consulted away right here for the Grizzlies. Oh, good poke check. Great poke check by Troy Gamble. Taylor trying to go to his backhand, but Gamble read it and gave him the stick. The only way Houston, Houston's got to score right here. Yes, they do. Mario Cittarone has to score, or the shootout will be over. And the save by Salo. And that's it. That's it. That clinches the shootout. There was only one round left, and Denver had the only two goals. So the Denver Grizzlies, two games played in their history, two games won, and for